dear students i welcome you all to this physics tutorial series i am following the book by ncert part 1 for class 11 so in this video we will solve the problem number 3.12 from the chapter number 3 in this problem we are given that a ball is dropped from the height of 90 meter so first information given here is that the height is 90 meter on a floor that means we have to see that from a height suppose this is 90 meter of height a ball is dropped on a floor suppose this one is the floor a ball is dropped on the floor at its collision on the floor the ball loses one tenth of its speed so next important point is here is it loses one tenth of its speed okay so what will happen the ball will strike the ground again it will bounce back and it will again go up to some distance and again from here it will again fall again it will bounce back okay here we are given plot the speed time graph of its motion between 0 to 12 seconds speed time graph means along the y-axis we have to keep the speed and along the x-axis we have to keep the time so we have to calculate the distance after each collision and then we have to calculate the speed and we have to calculate the time as well so speed versus time graph we have to plot so first of all let us write down what are the given parameters initial velocity it is denoted by small u is equal to zero because the ball is dropped from this height at this point the ball is at rest now it will gain momentum or it will gain motion due to the gravitational pull so this is one given information and we are given the distance of travel this will be equal to the height so we can denote with small h this is equal to 90 meter so we have to assume the acceleration should be due to gravity therefore acceleration will be equal to due to gravity small z so it will be 9.8 meter per second square so this value you have to keep in mind this will not be given in the question sometimes it will be given in the question so you have to memorize this the value the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meter per second square so here i would like to add one more point that when the ball is falling downward the gravitational pull also will be acting downward direction in that case we have to assume z to be positive and when the ball will bounce back and ball will move in this direction let me show you with another color so when the ball will be bouncing back at this direction both the direction of motion of the ball and the gravitational pull direction will be opposite in this case z will be negative z will have a negative value so in the first case we are having the ball is dropped from a height so it is moving along the motion or along the acceleration force direction so gravitational pull direction so therefore in this case we have to consider the acceleration due to gravity should be positive so from kinematics we have so one equation is v square is equal to u square plus twice a s so here v square v square means suppose we can modify so we can modify here here u square is u square plus twice a is nothing but here acceleration due to gravity and s s here is the distance so here we have h okay so we can put the values so initial velocity is zero so in this case v square is equal to zero square plus two into nine point eight into h h means 90 meter okay so from here v will be equal to root over 2 into 9.8 into 90 when we will calculate the square root uh, so the value will be 42 meter per second when the ball is free falling so from here to here let me show you from here to here so this distance is given 90 meter so at this falling point when the ball will strike with a speed of this much 42 meter per second so that will be the maximum speed at this the lowest point so because the ball is accelerating due to the force of gravity due to the pull of gravity so at this point we have this is 42 meter per second square now in the question we are given that when the ball strikes the floor it loses one tenth of its speed so after striking when the ball will bounce back 
it will lose its one tenth of its velocity so we'll calculate it later so we have found out final velocity v is equal to 42 meter per u was zero initial velocity was zero at 90 meter of height and t was zero now we have to calculate the time it will take to attain this much of velocity or speed we have to use another kinematic equation so we have s is equal to ut plus half a t square okay this is another equation so here we can say that this s is nothing but h here it is the height then u and suppose it is t1 plus half of a means here it is z and t1 square okay so here height is 90 we are already given u initial velocity is 0 into t1 plus half z means it is 9.8 into t1 square t1 square will remain as it is so from here this term will be 0 so from here we will get the expression of t1 as 2 into 90 divided by 9.8 so this is nothing but we can generalize this expression as t is equal to 2 into h this one 90 is the h value okay and it is divided by 9.8 that means divided by z so this equation each time we can use for calculating the time taken so this part we will use later on okay so from here we will get a t1 value of t1 is equal to 4.28 this much of second so at this floor we have speed of striking is 42 meter per second T1 we have calculated the time taken to attain this velocity is 4.28 second. So here we can say the velocity is equal to 42 meter per second. So this is the collision velocity of the ball with the ground. And the time T1 we have calculated to be 4.28 this much of second. So upon striking what will happen? The ball will lose 10% of its speed. So so initial velocity after striking the floor that will be 10% less of this original velocity so we have to find out the 90% of this velocity okay therefore we can say that v2 v2 this one suppose v1 so it will be 42 minus 42 into this much of value okay so here we can write 42 into 9 by 10 okay so here we'll have 37.28 meter per second suppose we have along the x-axis this is time in second unit is second and the time we have allotted so along the y-axis we will find the or we will use the speed because we are given in the question that we have to plot the speed versus time graph so along the y-axis we will put the speed here so the unit will be in meter per second so here we have already found that at time t equal to zero the velocity was zero so we have to find out so as it is a uniform motion let me use black color at this point time t equal to zero velocity is zero because from a height of 90 meter we are dropping the ball at the initial velocity it is zero 4.28 second this much of value we have the velocity is 42 meter per second then its velocity is decreasing by 10 percent okay so we have to find out the 4.28 second so 4.28 means it is approximately here at this point let me show you with black color okay 4.28 means at this point so 4.28 we are marking out here so from here we have to find out the velocity velocity is 42 point so velocity is 42 meter per second okay so at this 4.28 what will be the 42 value okay here we will have this is the 42 value okay so we have to now join these two points okay now are you getting my point at 4.28 the ball will attain the maximum velocity of 42 meter per second this is the speed along the y-axis now 
when the ball strikes the ground it loses 10 percent of its speed now we have to find out this value let me show you here this value we have to now find out this value so that after attaining 42 point meter per second the 10 percent velocity it will lose and it will have now new velocity of this much okay it will have this instantaneous change on striking the ground so this value is 37.8 meter per second so here we'll have this value 37.8 means almost the same value let me show you here so 37.8 value will be almost 38 so this point will be the 37.8 value so let me connect these two points so the velocity will directly drop on strike on striking the ground that means speed is now at this is 37. Point Eight. and this one was 42 so we did the dotted line showing the values so what will happen now initial velocity u is equal to 37.8 this much meter per second now we have to find out the height and we are z value will be same z is equal to 9.8 meter per second z value will have a negative sign here because this is the upward direction 9.8 meter per second square we have to use here and at the highest point when the ball will bounce back at the highest point what will be the final velocity p will be zero now we can calculate the value of h what will be the height okay suppose h1 so we can use the kinematic equation v square is equal to u square plus twice z h v value v value is zero u square u square means 37.8 this much of square minus why minus because now z is negative because the direction of gravitational pull is opposite to the direction of motion therefore minus 2 into 9.8 suppose here we have h1 okay so from here h1 we can calculate so calculate we will have 37.8 into 37.8 divided by 2 into 9.8 so this value will be 72.9 meter so this is actually required for the calculation this is not required for the graph plotting because in the graph you have to find out the speed versus time graph okay so we have to now calculate the time t2 so how much time it will take t2 will be we can use the formula this formula we can use okay time will 2 h divided by z sorry this value will be root over root over 2 h by z so here we can use root over 2 h by z so from here we can put the values h value we have found out h1 here will be so 2 into 72.9 divided by the value of z so z is 9.8 okay 9.8 meter per second square so what will have 3.857 this much of second okay time taken for the upward movement that means the ball falls again it bounces back and it attains a height of 72.9 meter this one was 90 meter after bounce back this is 72.9 meter and at this to attain this point this time time taken is this is 3.875 so what will be the total time therefore we can calculate total time is equal to 4.28 4.28 second it took for for the free fall from a height of 90 meter to the ground and it will be added to now after first bounce back okay 3.857 so what will be the total value 8.137 this much of second so this is the total time now so we have got when u equal to 37.8 this much of meter per second t is equal to 3.857 this much of second so we have calculated this and now we have to plot the graph so first of all we have to find this much of time along the 8.137 we have to find out this is the 8 value 137 means here at this point okay let me show you with black color so this is the point 8.137 so at this point we are having the velocity is 
speed will be zero because it is the highest point because therefore the this speed this much of speed will come to zero because this is the highest point after bouncing okay so here we have to joining join these points so from here we have to join this point okay are you getting my point so we have got up to 8.31 8.137 second now as per the question we have to calculate up to 12 second so after going to zero velocity so the ball will take another 3 point this much of time 3.85 uh, second this much of time to fall because the time of descent is equal to time of ascent so you have to keep in mind that in free fall there is no resistance in the medium therefore this will be equal to that this much okay therefore we have to add another 3.857 second of time therefore we can calculate the total time to again reach the highest point total time equal to first one was 4.28 plus 4.28 plus 3.857 plus again 3.857 so this much time it will again take so this is equal to 11.994 so this is approximately equal to 12 second and in the question we have to find out up to 12 second of time okay so at this time what will be the speed it will be the 10 percent of the previous speed therefore we have to calculate 37.8 into 9 by 10 that means 10 percent decrement there will be there 34.02 this much of meter per second so this is the speed at 11.994 second that is 12 second so we have to calculate this is the 12 second from here we have to connect here and at this point the ball will lose 10 percent of its speed and it will fall to 34 okay so let me draw another line here so at this 12 second of time it will fall to 34 it means up to here so this is the speed and time graph up to 12 second from 0 to 12 second of time this is the speed and time graph so this is the solution of the problem number 3.12 from the chapter number 3 thank you for watching if you have any question please put it in the comment section below